certain practicalities and I hope people will join join as we go along. That sounds like a good plan. And thank you so much for, uh, for that. That means that we are ready to kick off this session, the future of drones at smart city environment, the Nordic drone initiative. So for those that has joined us, welcome so much. And for those that are joining us on a, this recorded session, thank you so much also for uh, paying attention to what is happening in the drone industry in the Nordic region. My name is Anders Martinsen. I have the pleasure of hosting this session together with my colleagues from the rest of the Nordic countries. Daily, I run UAS Norway, one of the UAV organizations uh, which is uh, advocating the usage of drones on the multiple levels of uh, areas. But on these sessions, we will talk about the smart city environment, but also how drones in the mobility solution can play such an important role in the future. So before we start uh, introducing my colleagues, you have a great list of uh, short but very good um, uh, presentations ahead of you for the next hour, included a panel session. And we will also be able to take questions from uh, you. And I hope that we will be able at the end uh, to um, uh, also answer questions that not necessarily will be answered directly in the end of this session. Um, so the goal here is to give you an interesting perspective of what is happening in the region, how also drones in the lower altitude can be used to integrate with ground transportation, but also a part of the future of the mobility solution. And by doing that, I think there will be no better than Tor Skoglund from NDI project and the RISE Institute of Sweden to give us an introduction for the next 10 minutes. After that, uh, Rasmus Lundqvist is preparing for Sweden drone news. Thank you very much. I'll do my best. Um, and thank you very much to uh, Tampere to, uh, for having uh, us over to speak about our exciting big project about drones. Um, I'm uh, the, the project leader, project manager of this uh, big initiative. Uh, however, I'm not uh, one of the finest experts at all uh, in this area. Therefore, I will have a, it would be great fun to hear all of the other speakers later on as well. Uh, about me, um, as my name is on the slide now, um, I'm working for this organization called Research Institution of Sweden, RICE for short. Uh, I joined a year ago and I'm part of the um, 3,000 employees uh, working uh, with all kinds of innovation processes, so not just uh, uh, flights or drones or so. Uh, myself, my research background is uh, within uh, behavioral changes, uh, so I'm looking at how people's behaviors change from a new technology, introduction of new technology. Um, background in ITS, the intelligent transport systems. I don't know if that's used anymore, that expression, but uh, as I said, I joined RICE a year ago or so uh, in innovation orchestration. I have a background in electrical engineering, which should be forgiven by now because it's not what I do. I help others, researchers and uh, scientists and engineers uh, do what they do best instead. And this is such an example of, of that. Um, you can change to the next slide. This uh, project started in June. Uh, so we've been running it for half a year. Um, of course, it's um, the idea and the initiative came uh, about half a year earlier. So one year ago, the idea was born to, to do this, to make this initiative a, a, a great project. Uh, it was... Um, a woman called Maria Fiskerud, who, who also works at RICE, who, who was the project manager of the Nordic Network for Electric Aviation that saw this need and the possibility. And we have similar aims of these two projects. Uh, the project is, as you can see, maybe you can see in the bottom there, it's blue against green, but uh, it's, it's Nordic Innovation uh, has co-financed this and uh, they've done this through their Nordic Smart Mobility and Connectivity Program, uh, which we are very happy for. The, the total budget for the project is about a million euros or so. However, in Norwegian kroners, as they don't uh, want to touch euros, I think, being Norwegians. Um, 
the starting date, as I mentioned, was in June, uh, and and the project is budgeted for uh, working through the uh, year of 2022 as well, beyond COVID, we hope. Um, however, the, the one of the goals, uh, I'll keep there, uh, we can stay on the last, the previous slide. However, the goal uh, of the um, of the project is to expand beyond 2022 um, so that we can build a platform um, for cooperation even after the the project is ended now you can change slide thank you the members of the um the project so far uh, are from the four or five nordic countries depending uh, how we count uh, of course, the Nord countries are five, but our members, I was intending. We have, um, it's a fairly big project in that way that there are many um, members in it, and we intend to make it bigger, as I mentioned. Uh, this is from industry and authorities. If you look in the, in the top left bubble up there, it's, it's the industry. There are a few uh, drone companies uh, developing technology and services and so on. And to the right, up to the right, we have uh, the already mentioned uh, UAS Norway and uh, the other Norwegian organization Avinor. Uh, we also have uh, a region, for example, um, to the home, which is the home of the aerial capital of Sweden, uh, Linköping, Östergötland. Uh, we have uh, to the bottom left on the screen, you see the three research and science centers uh, from Finland, Norway and Sweden. I mentioned that RICE took the initiative, but one of the big uh, members, big and important partners here are the VTT uh, from Finland. Uh, and we also are happy to have Norse, the Norwegian equivalents of RICE, the state-owned research centers. Um, and then we have a few partnership networks in the bubble uh, down to the right, which is great. Uh, for example, Business Tamper, which we are happy to have with us, especially today. Uh, we also have uh, a, a consultancy company tying together the, the research science and centers and the industry as we see it uh, in Bell Rock. Um, the, the project serves as an open platform uh, and, and therefore we will always welcome new partners and, and uh, on board for joint innovation. This, this uh, has already happened. We have had a, uh, we've been getting some attention in national media, uh, also outside of the Nordics then. Uh, so we've gotten uh, interest from, uh, er, from several countries. Uh, you mentioned Russia, for example, or, or um, Germany's shown some interest. Um, one partner that we have welcomed indirectly already is the Innovation Center of Iceland, which is on the next slide. So they got their own little bubble there. If we get the next slide. Click, beep. We get the next, there we are. Yes, sorry, I'm a bit slow. Um, which is, we're very happy for. They will also present a bit about uh, what's happening in Iceland now. Uh, we will have uh, representatives as such, Sure, you understood from Anders' previous presentation here, the chairperson here, that we uh, uh, will get presentations from all the Nordic countries and what's going on, what's hot and, and important. I'll just mention a few things about this project more. Um, the next slide. Uh, what we are actually aiming for with the uh, Nordic Drone Initiative as such. Um, we have a few things we will do. We will identify and evaluate how to provide the greatest benefits. Uh, and this will be not just to society and business, but also environmental effects of this. Um, we will map the ecosystem and opportunities. We will uh, contribute to the development of tech. We will propose development enabling large scale operations. This is important because that has got to do with the regulations and the legal frameworks. Um, as this is a Nordic initiative, one of the uh, big things is the how, how to cross borders properly. And that is, um, nowadays it's even trickier, I guess, but it's easier with a drone than with a person these days. 
So uh, still, uh, there will be some work within legal frameworks as well, uh, important. And the last bullet being the creation of a platform. Uh, and this is what I, I highlighted earlier on here as so, well, uh, for continued research and innovation um, in international cooperation. This, these are very similar to the Nordic Network for Electric Engineering, uh, no, engineering, aviation. Um, but the, we are then focusing uh, on lower altitude airspace, I'd say, and uh, drones. Uh, with that said, uh, I will once again point out that you are all uh, welcome to get to us and uh, join us in the future uh, for discussions. We, as I said, mentioned earlier, uh, we are aiming to have, this is an open platform. Uh, the idea was of course, physical meetings and, and um, great exchange. This is the first of two presentations we've done to, to present ourselves so far, but we are aiming to have much more uh, physical meetings. Uh, let's say the summer and this autumn started, uh, within it. Uh, if you want to contact me, uh, these are my contacts. I'm sure it's also part of the Tampere uh, web page. Um, so with that said, I think that's um, pretty much what I can say about the project now. And I hope we will get great information from the different partners that are joining us here as well. Thank you so much, uh, Tu, for uh, an exciting introduction. Uh, as the first speaker, you always set uh, the lead landmark for where we are starting. So while Rasmus is preparing, I just have a question for you, and then also might be interesting for those that are listening to us today. Uh, who are you seeking as partners, the ones that should, uh, in a way, uh, possibly reach out to the NDI project? And you, who are you in particular looking for? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't like to answer that question. <laughs> Uh, we have we have a great interest in in both uh, research organizations and and, and uh, consultancies, of course. But I'd say that the most important to get the business rolling and, and this Nordic uh, cooperation working is is a lot of industry partners would be good. These are what can uh, make the most out of meeting each other, I think, and inspire each other and to um, look at what the specific Nordic challenges are because that's yes, because that is our Nordic focus. challenges are something definitely which is one of the objective you told me about the project about the weather conditions in the nordic region which is quite unique which also is a good uh, illustration on the first slide to our next uh, presenter uh, let's welcome uh, rasmus uh, lindquist and uh, tool thank you so much for your presentation the Thank next uh, presentation is from Rasmus uh, Lundqvist, a uh, research scientist, also from uh, RISE. Thank you so much, uh, Rasmus, for joining us today. Hi, thank for, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, as you um, introduced me, I'm, my name is Rasmus. I, I'm a researcher at RISE. Um, I have a long background in uh, drones, um, so I've, I have been developing uh, the drone that you see on the slide right now. Uh, from Mainbase, one of the companies that are also uh, part of the Nordic Drone Initiative. Uh, but since uh, three years, I've been at RISE as a research scientist. And um, now I'm, I want to present to you uh, a short update on drone news from Sweden. So please uh, let me have the next slide. Yeah, so first, uh, I think... Um, uh, what has the most impact is the, um, the rollout of the new EU rules that has uh, been postponed uh, a couple of times, but now it's been rolled out. And one of the um, good things is that uh, the drone licenses uh, examinations has started and we can now see the, the inflow of, uh, of uh, uh, business operators and private operators that are, are registering on that. So this, uh, this is the and the number of people that have uh, started doing that. Um, and we already have 563 business operators uh, flying under the new um, EU rules, which I think is really good. So I think we can take the next slide. And one of the interesting projects that are coming um, is an autonomous air bridge 
between uh, lean shipping and non shipping. I think you can start the video there to the right and mute it so we can see the thing flying a bit. Timo? Yep. Mute it. I think the, the video is exciting enough without the, <laughs> the music. So this is one of the companies also involved in the Nordic Drone Initiative. And this is a Katla uh, manufacturing and developing a vertical takeoff and landing drone. It, the intention is to make a manned version, uh, so aiming for unmanned um, aerial mobility. They are, uh, have a cooperation uh, with um, uh, an independent uh, business group making uh, vertiports, uh, also stationed in Norrköping here in Sweden. And together with the LFV, um, the Linköping University, and the two cities, Norrköping and Linköping, we're aiming to make an autonomous air bridge in the third quarter of 2022. Um, and the aim is to have um, 10 kilos delivered over 50 kilometers uh, continuously. Uh, so effectively, effectively making an airspace uh, corridor between the cities. Uh, in the project is also um, infrastructure uh, analysis. So having a look at what infrastructure is needed to connect the, the two cities. Firstly, by a drone, drone deliveries of cargo, but then at the, as the next step also with them, uh, with them uh, transporting people. Uh, I think we can take the next slide. Next. Okay. Uh, this is a video. You can also mute this video, but start it. So this is um, the biggest news from 2020. And this is the company Everdrone in Gothenburg um, delivering heart starters uh, in an urban area. So they have three centers set up with autonomous uh, drone centers that can send out uh, a hard starting um, equipment for cardiac arrests. Um, the technology behind it, creating the drone and delivering something has existed for quite some time. But so the news here is actually that the operation and the flight permit in itself being able to autonomously deliver something in an urban area. So to do, in order to do this, they have um, uh, had indoor flights with the drones to test the reliability. They've been de uh, developing uh, parachute systems for, for the reliability of, of the uh, safety. Uh, RISE has also been part of this, uh, of this work. Mm. I think we could take the next slide. So um, these were just two of the things that are happening in Sweden. There's so much more to mention. Uh, we have a WASP here in Sweden um, with a, an uh, amazing budget for, um, for drones and autonomous systems. It's the Wallenberg Artificial Intelligence and Autonomous Systems Program. Uh, this year, uh, Energimyndigheten is uh, issuing a, a call for fossil free air travel that also potentially in involves drones that has a 100 million crown funding uh, for, um, with the aim for fos fossil free air travel to, uh, to, until the year 2045. Vinova has funded 15 different companies that are um, they are working on the, the, their programs right now this year. So that's uh, going to be uh, some amazing things coming out. And we also have 5G and UTM programs between uh, Tilia Eriksson and RICE. And uh, lastly, and the most important, of course, the Nordic Drone Initiative, uh, mapping the ecosystem. So I, I am the work package leader of um, mapping the ecosystem in the Nordics. And as you see it with the, where I started off, the number of companies uh, involved in this is just amazing. And the number of news coming out is also increasing a lot. So having, having the ecosystem mapped and get, getting 
and showing the picture of the, the what's happening within drones is really interesting for us. Thank you. Did I keep the time? More or less, uh, Rasmus, but it was so exciting that I didn't stop you, but uh, we might have a few less minutes for uh, for our uh, general session at the end. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries. That was exciting news from Sweden, and I think also what you mentioned about mapping the industry is, is exciting. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your thoughts today, but also we look forward to the results coming out of especially uh, uh, your work on that work package. Um, the next speaker is me, uh, so uh, I will try to make up for the time that we are um, that we are overhead. But um, I'm going to be talking about the, a topic which I find interesting, uh, not only for the purpose of the MDI project, but in general. I'd like to draw us a little bit back to also the drones and the public acceptance, because if we don't get the public acceptance, it's hard actually to do anything of what we're trying, either if it's sensor technology, uh, um, um, flying over people packages or, or uh, ground transportation or having mobility studies. So on the next slide, uh, I'm giving you a little bit on the highlights of what we see from the Nordic region. So we have done for the last few years, we've done a monitoring of um, the public acceptance in Norway. And what we see is quite exciting. And I think this is also transferable over to the rest of the Nordic region, even though we haven't yet done a study on this. But my assumption is that we tend to, to um, the trend uh, most likely on a certain scale for, for this. So when it comes to drone delivery, we saw that in, in 2020, in November, there was a general acceptance and where people were generally positive uh, on the ratio of 31% for uh, 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 using drones uh, um, as, as a part of the ecosystem for, for uh, lower altitude drones than to be used for freight purposes and delivery. And in terms of the question, if they were likely to order and, uh, and use such a service, 29% of them said yes. That means that in Norway alone, we have about 1.1 million potential users that would like and are currently embracing such a technology if it had been available. So Norway is, as many of the other Nordic countries, very interested in the new technology, which also we see when it comes to the number of drones. So we have about more, more or less about 400,000 Norwegian that owns at least one drone or more. So we know for sure that is 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 about 400 to 460,000 drones, which is not toys, which is then uh, larger drones than, than what we see here, which is below 100 gram. That means that per capita, we have a lot of drones actually in the air. So that also gives us uh, an interesting uh, figure when it comes to how positive the general population are towards drone in general. We see that since 2016 until 2020, uh, 2020 it has been increased uh, for, from about 50% until last year, 67%, which in general is very positive to drones. And this is extremely important for us to know because as having politicians at the background, having funding to be reached out for, if, if we don't have the public acceptance for having this actually as a backdrop, it makes our work so hard. And for those that are working on smart city development, moving on to like infrastructure and also looking into the needs of drones. This should possibly be good numbers to have uh, with you uh, when it comes to if actually this is something that society wants. Yes, it is. It's something they want, it's something they need. So it's just about preparing because this is coming. And the next slide will definitely, in my mind, show you one of the reasons why the Nordic region is such a good place for coordinating such an activity. Uh, this um, uh, um, picture is from flight radar on the 7th of March. Uh, it could be the funeral of what we see as the general aviation of last year, but it also marks possibly a, a good indication of what general aviation on the big picture. Of course, this doesn't show all movements, but it gives us an indication of why we have such much space available and also why so many good initiatives also that has been done in Finland and also in Sweden and that is also now coming up in Denmark has been able to use the 
low altitude uh, uh, and uh, aviation, no, sorry, the, um, the airspace available for us that we don't see, for instance, in higher um, dense areas down in Central Europe. And as you see from my next slide, we have some good example, which is just one indication where great saving, and then I'm not only talking about money, but also of course carbon and emission free flights. But I'm sure there is a number of uh, good examples that I know also that Yacht from Denmark will uh, address in his presentation. But just to highlight uh, the uh, upper left example, where we see that uh, both the trip going from Garten to Storfosna, which is in this, uh, the mid uh, of Norway. It's an island that, uh, uh, yeah, that is, takes about 20 minutes with a ferry. The frequency is about six per day. Uh, and it's about 139 inhabitants on one of the islands and 210 of the rest. You don't need to be a mathematician to understand that we need a smarter, efficient solution than having a ferry that's going on a regular uh, frequency six times per day, 24 seven, 365. So a need for this is definitely needed in our region. So I think this is just an example that's very transferable to the rest of the region. And um, I'm really looking forward to hearing more of the other examples of the rest of the speakers coming up. Uh, and by that, I'm excited to introduce also the next speaker, which is uh, then Tero from Robot Experts together with Timo Lin from VTT. Thank you so much for joining us today, gentlemen. Okay, and uh, Timo Lin will start this presentation. So we thought that we need two, two person from Finland you say about the one, one from the other country. So I will first speak a little bit about the research status and uh, Tero continues this commercial and company, company side. So there, there is a lot of things happening, happening in the drone research area now, now in Finland. Uh, there are these uh, logos from the different universities and uh, universities of applied sciences and uh, research institutes currently contributing <clears throat> in the, or the, some maybe have been the most visible doing some, some research. And research, uh, there are example projects or maybe most important projects now ongoing in the research area. Uh, and uh, development in the research is happening, happening in this uh, networking research and business drone ecosystem areas. Uh, this drone uh, in, uh, network networking the Nordic countries. There's research going on the 5G connectivity area in Finland also, as it was in Sweden. And uh, there are projects preparing this, uh, this bigger drone scenarios, drone taxis or, or heavy cargo drones. And uh, then we go to certified category. Uh, there are projects uh, researching the drone logistics related things also in the use space area. For example, Gov, Gov 2.0. Uh, and but there are still a lot of room for, for the areas that there surely research is needed, like the ground infra ground infra for the logistic or passenger drones, autonomy is still still something what much more autonomy is needed. And these uh, longer flight time flight times and uh, heavier payloads, so maybe new energy sources. But now I pass to Tero, you'll tell what is happening in the business side. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so in, the, in, in Finland, drones are much uh, used in forestry sector and, and uh, we have a strong drone ecosystem uh, around it. Finland is actually a forerunner in, in research for remote sensing uh, in, in forestry and agriculture. And another strong field is uh, infrastructure and access to inspections. Um, yeah, I think that the biggest drone operator in Finland is actually the police. Currently, they have uh, 254 drones in, in operational use. And I think that that's uh, quite of uh, probably the, the highest uh, number in the, in the authorities in, in Nordic who is using the drones. So, in the, and, and if, if you put the next slide, um, 
yeah, first of all, uh, in this slide, I, I added a few companies who are active in the Finnish drone ecosystem, and, and there are many, many companies who would be listed here. So don't please don't be offended if, if your company is missing in this list. You all are important. Uh, the industry, drone industry in Finland is somewhat modest despite the Finnish drone legislation before the new European Union uh, rules was the, let's say, the most liberal in the world. Uh, Finland have currently around, around 3,800 uh, 3, registered drone companies. And in the latest register, what I was checking in 2019, uh, there was close to 350 registered aircraft for commercial uses. So not as much as, for example, in, 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 in Norway. In average, the drones are very small and, and without, a para, uh, with, or without a parachute, and only 3.5% of the drones are, are, are over 10 kilos. So to interpret these values, the most, most of the drone operators have only one commercial small drone, such as DJI Phantom or, or Mavic. If you put the next slide. So... Um, Currently, I'm not aware of, of any commercial drone logistics services in Finland, except what Wing is doing, and Wing is operating in small area in East, East Helsinki. There are two companies, that Base Auto and Lento Logistics, uh, who are developing the drones, drones for logistic purposes. And one interesting case is actually a new Karkia shop where customers, uh, consumers can order the candy delivery by drone. But however, this is basically not kind of fulfilling the concept of drone logistics itself as, as the delivery is done from very short distance where the pilot can kind of uh, see the drone. A uh, few shorter drone logistics demonstrations has been done recently as, as well, for example, by Kesko and, and Matka Huolto. Uh, space project, we did the uh, first international logistic flight between, uh, between uh, Estonia and Finland and it was uh, using unmanned traffic management system all the way. Uh, also, University of Applied Science in Tampere has their own, own drone logistic demonstrations. So, as, as a summary, there, there are uh, only a few companies kind of heading toward the drone delivery, but there is a great interest in, in both in the, uh, P2C and P2P. Uh, and, and I see that uh, when the service level and prices are, are reasonable, there, there will be a lot of a lot of interest. If you put the last slide, uh, I just wanted to highlight that the air taxi scheme is in, in Finland is somewhat active. Uh, for example, Tampere and Oulu cities are members of European Innovation Partnership Initiative of, of Urban Air Mobility. And Oulu even have uh, established their own Urban Air Mobility Oulu Initiative. Uh, 2019 August with Volocopter, we was flying in Helsinki Airport uh, in, in Coffee Space Project. And that was actually the first flight in the world where Air Taxi was flying in the international airport, which was open at the same time for other traffic as well. Uh, there is the two projects that I would just want to want to mention. And in those both projects, Ihan will provide air taxi services or air taxis. Other one focus on em emergency medical services. Another one is a continuation of, of, of use space. So I think that's uh, about my part. Thank you so much, uh, Tero. As we can see, there's a lot of uh, great and inter interesting things happening and has been happening in Finland. I, I think it's very interesting, as you mentioned also. Uh, and, and by the way, while I just summarize your presentation, for those that are attending, uh, this is the time to get your snack and get your coffee, because in a few minutes you'll have some great footage from, uh, from Iceland with a great video. So get your popcorn or snack ready. So, so Tara, I think what you mentioned with uh, the police is interesting. I heard last year that they have actually 6% of their police force are using drones, which is possibly a world record. I'm not familiar yes. with any police force that using drones so effectively as they are. Yes, that's, that's correct. That's, they, they really decided to use uh, drone as an as a important tool for them. Sounds good. That's definitely something that uh, other agencies and uh, uh, government agencies can take advantage of. 
So if we are successful with our media player, we should hopefully have a good presentation or a video from Iceland. If we see for any reason that it's lagging, we will give you a PowerPoint presentation instead. So uh, with my help of the technical moderator, enjoy what is up next. Iceland has a beautiful landscape ranging from the dense urban area of downtown Reykjavik to the mostly unpopulated countryside. Our country has a large geothermal infrastructure, maritime ports, and a close proximity to the Arctic region. This makes Iceland an ideal site for testing and developing remote sensing solutions using drones and satellite imaging. With this video, we hope to give you an overview of the drone activities in Iceland. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. So the Innovation Center Iceland is a non-profit research organization and our purpose is to be a bridge between academia and industry. At the moment, uh, the city has rolled out a, is rolling out a, a plan which we call the Green Deal or, or the Green Plan, which where we are um, focusing on, on uh, amongst other technological solutions to uh, a lot of challenges that are facing us at the moment. We have been collaborating with Strato, the bus operator in Iceland, on a project using uh, drones that can automatically land on, on the buses. And this is also a project that uh, multiple other companies and universities in Europe are collaborating on. And this will enable uh, drones to travel much further than they can today while charging the batteries. But it also enables drones to go through no-fly zones on top of the buses. I've mostly been working with uh, film projects, um, like Netflix films and Hollywood films <laughs> and uh, TV shows. But uh, we always get some like crazy challenge, challenge every time. You, you think you're going to lose everything that day, but somehow we survive, you know. My, my favorite uh, smart city projects that we have been doing are all about trash and trash collection, actually, because in that, there, you, there everything comes together, in my opinion. So we have been doing trials uh, in collaboration with other Nordic cities, actually. So uh, with uh, sensors in public uh, waste bins. One of the big projects we're working on uh, with a local landfill operator is trying to quantify greenhouse gas emissions using gas sensors on drones. Uh, and this is a very state-of-the-art project where we are using uh, new technologies to, to quantify the, specifically the methane uh, pollution from the landfill. So uh, the drones can be very effective uh, when measuring, uh, for example, the effect of global warming and get much uh, more accurate data on, on the shrinking of, of uh, the glaciers. Next uh, summer, we, we will have a, a drone with that technology and, and we're going to introduce it to uh, interested partners. We use the smart city concept to help us make the city more like livable, like more attractive. Uh, so I think you have you have the manpower, you have the you have the have a good like ground to try out things, and like a nice place also. The city is good; it's nice, entertaining. We have a lot to offer. We believe that Iceland is an ideal ground for developing drone-related technologies. We have a very varied landscape, ranging from the urban to the vast countryside. 
we have the harsh weather conditions, which mean that you can test your technology and make it robust. And you know that if it works here, then it can probably work anywhere else in the world. Thank you so much, uh, Iceland, for a great uh, presentation. I know that you are also online. So for those that possibly are just uh, joining us now, there's still an opening for you to send us some questions that we will possibly be, or hopefully be able to answer at the end. Uh, if not, uh, we will be able to reach out to you after this session. But uh, going from Iceland, we still have some great uh, presentation for you. Uh, let's introduce uh, Jart Tøll Pedersen from UAS Denmark. Yes, uh, hello everybody. So today I'll just talk shortly about our uh, test center in uh, uh, Denmark, um, which has been running successfully for quite a number of years now and uh, is still getting used more and more. Uh, behind the test center, there, there are four partners really. It's uh, the airport of Odense, Hans Christian Andersen Airport. It's the Southern University uh, where they have a drone center. Then it's uh, the Funen municipalities, and then it's the business region Fun. Um, and we run this in a very strong cooperation together with the cluster organization, Odense of Robotics, which is Denmark's national cluster for robots, uh, automation, and drones. So about the test center, uh, you see on, on the uh, uh, visual next to it that uh, we have uh, it's split in three separate test zones. Altogether, it's uh, 867 square kilometers of drone airspace, um, and it's possible to operate it up to 3,000 feet. Uh, it can be higher uh, on requests, of course, and approval from the authorities. Uh, what we do is that we have the possibility of uh, blocking uh, other air traffic in this uh, zone. Uh, whenever there's a test going on. Uh, and of course, you can do both uh, normal VLOS uh, flights and uh, you can also do uh, VLOS flights with heavy uh, drones, uh, that is drones uh, above 25 kilos or more than three meters uh, wingspan. And you can do B VLOS uh, flights. Uh, so there's a possibility of doing many different things here. Uh, and uh, right now, uh, the most exciting use of the uh, uh, test center airspace is actually for the new project U-Space Funen. The project U-Space Funen is operated by Navier uh, and has a multiple number of uh, partners uh, in it uh, together with the UAS Denmark Test Center, the Southern University of Denmark, and uh, many, many different companies uh, are in here on testing this. And the purpose of, of this is, of course, to develop uh, and implement and define Denmark's first use space. Uh, so this is about uh, having a traffic management system uh, developed. Uh, it's also involving 5G, of course. And eventually, uh, it's possible to uh, not only test in the test center, but of course, to uh, implement use spaces around in the country, uh, wherever it is needed uh, for the time it's needed. And uh, ultimately, of course, also to make sure that you have uh, the possibility of uh, making a digitalization uh, on both manned and unmanned flights so that they can coexist uh, at the same time in the airspace. Uh, but of course, this will take uh, yet some time. Uh, so you can take the next slide now. So another one, uh, another big project that is running here uh, is the Health Drone Project. And the Health Drone Project is uh, a, also operated with the, the Southern University of, of Denmark together with a, a couple of companies, uh, Let's Holo, and uh, who is also into autonomous uh, driving um, and operates a couple of bus lines uh, in uh, part of Copenhagen and in uh, Aalborg. And uh, now they're also into drones and also uh, uh, the emergency uh, rescue center, FALC, the operation there is also involved and many other. And, and what is the purpose of the health drone? That is really, it's uh, from a very small island uh, 
south uh, in Denmark uh, called Eru. It's about uh, trying to get uh, uh, first we'll uh, send medicine uh, from the uh, Funen Island uh, from either Odense or Svendborg to Eru. But eventually it will be uh, the transportation of patients uh, from the uh, small island into the uh, hospitals in Svendborg or Odense. And uh, it could also be the other way around, send out the uh, medical expert out to the small island so that they can help uh, as uh, fast as possible. And it actually is uh, one of these things where you can uh, save a lot of uh, time so you don't have to go by ferry and car but go straight uh, to the uh, hospital. Um, by now, uh, the project has uh, achieved the first uh, approval of its uh, specific uh, operational risk assessment, which means that they are now allowed to do the first BVLOS flights, which will probably take place this summer. Uh, not, with, not with patients though, and not with doctors, but uh, as a test flight. So they will go uh, on a route uh, from the uh, small island area into Svendborg and into Odense. And, and that will be the first uh, test uh, of a longer distance uh, here. So we are looking very much forward to follow this uh, project for the time uh, being in the coming months and years. It, it will take another couple of years uh, before it's uh, ready for the transportation of uh, humans, I guess. And we can go to the next slide. Uh, another uh, exciting project that is taking place is actually uh, uh, within the energy uh, sector. Uh, and I know there's a lot of other projects going on within the energy sector uh, for many reasons. Uh, this is a little bit special here. Uh, the Drones for Energy project uh, is a free year uh, uh, project and it's uh, also uh, from the Southern University of Denmark. And uh, here it's about uh, really to give the power line operators, uh, the grid operators, to inspect the power grid uh, on the cables um, and uh, do that autonomously. And uh, at the same time as it uh, can fly and uh, collect the data on whether there's corrosion or other things with the cables that needs to be done uh, to have uh, some work done on it. It's also a, possible, uh, a possibility for the drone to actually uh, reload, recharge, uh, going close to the uh, cables. So the, the drone will not have to go back and forth all the time. It can continue its flight along the, the cables, uh, recharging from the power grid itself, uh, which of course is, is not with a direct uh, cable, but with the electromagnetism. So uh, it's still very early days here, uh, but I think you can check more if you go in on, uh, there's a link here to the LinkedIn where you can check more about it if you're interested. Uh, so these are two of the more interesting uh, projects going on. I just shown these as examples uh, and the examples of what is going on in the test center, uh, because both projects are centered around the test center. Uh, a lot of other things are going on and uh, we have seen a, a tremendous increase in the use of the test center and in new projects coming to within the drones uh, in, the, in the recent year. And it seems that it's uh, going to continue to increase quite a lot for the following year. So thank you very much. I hope I caught a little bit of the time here. And back to you, Anas. Thank you so much, uh, Jart, for an exciting presentation. Uh, you know, it, it's so exciting to hear all those good examples of what is happening and has been happening uh, throughout the region. Uh, uh, looking at what is uh, um, uh, happening on the forefront of the Nordic region, I'm absolutely sure that this will be something that will be valuable to, to combine in the MDI project. Uh, and I think that mapping the Nordic ecosystem is, uh, is of interest for a lot of uh, us uh, here. Um, we are not done. Uh, we still have some more minutes left. And I think we should try to spend them as best as we can. I know that this is a recorded session. So uh, let's uh, go back to uh, uh, a few questions that we might be able to answer. And I think we should do this quite quickly so we can get as many as we can. Um, um, I'd like to run back very quickly to the public acceptance of drones, just to get a little bit of overall view of what that is like. Uh, Tevo, you've been uh, able, as you said, in 2018 to do one of the first air taxi 
uh, with volocopter, did you get any feedback from the general population about what they believe was on drones at that time? Yeah, um, as, as that project was focusing on actually about the use base and, and how to control the, the drones in the in, in unmanned uh, aviation, um, we we did the flight with uh, with volocopter in in, in Helsinki Airport, and um, I, I would say that uh, for the public acceptance, we didn't focus on that project. But what we saw it on on uh, with the press in press, uh, we in, invited the press uh, to to visit in the airport, and and at least they were super excited. But uh, we, ha we had uh, another project that I mentioned uh, focusing on drone deliveries. We did it with, uh, together with Matkaholta and Kesko. Matkaholta is one, the, the leading uh, logistic company, I would say, like that. And uh, the Kesko is the second largest uh, grocery chain. And, and in that project, it was three days only, but we delivered uh, 100 uh, packets for the, for the for the uh, public and, and what we get on that one, the people were super excited and, and the people passing by, were, they were super excited of it. We have to remember it, it was uh, three days. So I, I think that the acceptance or, or the, um, yeah, acceptance probably would be changing if, if those drones would be landing and taking off for one month over there or, or, or one year. So it's it's very interesting to see that what what really the public acceptance will be in the future when there will be more 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 buzzing around. Thank you, um, Tool. I'd like to address a question to you, just a follow up. Uh, uh, what about the public acceptance in Sweden? I mean, you are so into this medical services like every drone, which also may be uh, interesting for you, Yacht, in, in Denmark. How important is it in general to get the public's acceptance for having drones in, in cities and actually doing something such as saving lives? It is, uh, of course, extremely important. And it is, just, let's say, a smart move to start with the most pressing matters like uh, heart starters, um, which will increase this uh, acceptance. Um, there are studies saying that, that uh, noise from above is more irritating than noise from the streets. Uh, but um, taken into account how much noise from streets we have gotten used to, I, I think that uh, when people get to see the, the um, positive sides of drone transports, I, I think they will start uh, accepting it. So we have, to, we have to show the public. It's very similar to, to um, self-driving cars, which are um, road vehicles, which I am also deeply involved in. Uh, people need, need to see them in order to get used and, uh, to them and accept them. Thank you. A question for our colleagues uh, at, at Iceland. I remember some years ago, we heard about uh, AHA that made a drone delivery uh, from grocery, etc. What is uh, what do you see actually uh, as the biggest market potential for drones and drone delivery in Iceland coming up? Yeah, sure. uh, yeah I mean uh, the biggest opportunities. I, I, I think definitely. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm not representing AHA, so but uh, they have been doing it now for quite some time, and uh, I have spoken to them about uh, using drones versus just using like uh, autonomous cars or like small robots. And they, even though we have this uh, difficult weather conditions here in Iceland that kind of prohibit uh, using the drones quite frequently, they still felt like the, the drones were a bigger opportunity there. So it's, uh, I definitely think there is an opportunity. And of course, like the, we have this, it's not very dense population here. So there are definitely some, some applications, just as uh, some of the presentations where they're kind of uh, transporting to, to islands and so on, where it's like a very infrequent uh, access. I think drone, drones can definitely, and, and I think it's what might be interesting also seeing like kind of the usage of more long range drones here in Iceland, like not just 
flying few kilometers, but flying tens or hundreds of kilometers with equipment. Yeah. I see that we have actually, uh, we got a question here that we might also be able to answer uh, together here. What are the potential areas for drones use in addition to logistics in future smart city environment? Um, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe that's a good question for Rasmus or uh, Tour. Go ahead, Rasmus. Yeah, so I, I love this topic. Um, I think, if we look at the logistics in a, in a smart city today, uh, some cities are smart. If you think about the uh, like services like Fordora, you can you can order food from any restaurant at any place and get get it delivered by a human on a bike, but still with an app, right? Uh, it is more expensive to do the same delivery with a drone today. The time when a when we reach a tipping point, when it becomes more cheaper and faster, is when it comes in scale. So that is when it's del delivering anything to anywhere. So that's when, when, it's, when it's commercially viable. And that, then that's a completely new logistics layer over a city. So it only becomes really effective when it comes in scale. And that's when we get the real problems with the public acceptance. So having the, just one or a couple of drones trying to service a, a city, it's going to be only for some small things like medicine, uh, but, but on scale, it's going to be a massive change. So then I think I'm going to summarize by a question to you, uh, to you two uh, as uh, the project leader of this. And this is the last question that we have for this session today. So this will be the wrap out uh, comment from you. Um, what is needed from the Nordic region to see drone logistics uh, in a larger scale? What is the most important thing now to move on? I, I would say uh, it's the legal frameworks and the regulations to synchronize them over borders, be, across borders. Um, that is, is the the most clear thing I see right now. Please uh, fill in you other experts if you don't agree. But Maybe that's what I would say. Auto autonomy and uh, these tools for PV loss flights and, uh, and the ground infra. Maybe those te yeah. techni technical things are also something that yeah. need, need yeah. to be in place, and uh, so that the so that the system must be something that uh, not every drone require one person to pilot it. That uh, there must be tools that the one person can pilot fleet of logistical drones, and there is autonomy and remote piloting yeah. existing. And that's exactly a good point, and also which is commented here now in the chat. Uh, how do you see the safety of drone delivery? To make sure it's delivered to the right place and person. That goes also both for privacy, but it is also go for what we all are really working on, which is the safety integration of drones into the airspace. And that's also the regulatory framework that will take care of that. So I'm sure that um, that will be definitely something that it just needs to be in place. Otherwise, it will not be scalable at all beyond the, the testing that we see today. Uh, as in the rest of the can I, can I, sorry, can I add one more important part you mentioned about uh, the airspace or, or um, air risk, but I, I think that the one important part as well is the ground risk and how to mitigate and how to handle that one, how to plan where the drone can fly and where they cannot fly without authorization and, and, and how to minimize the, the risk, for example, which are associated when drones will be landing or taking off and, and these kind of things. That was the final comment? Yes. Yes, that's good. And that's that's important. We also see in chat here that there are some good examples. We know we have some good friends in the international drone community that's also sharing good examples for drone logistics. Uh, we are focused on the NDI project about what works in the Nordic region, but also make sure that we can work together for the future of logistics and mobility solution, which is green and emission-free in our region. 
So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And I really hope that people will pay attention to the project. I, uh, I definitely encourage you to reach out to both participants if you see that this is something you would like to learn and hear and possibly participate in. Tool school, Skoglund is a good point of contact unless you do have not a regional or national point of contact. So to all of you uh, which has either been seeing us uh, directly or uh, look at this uh, as recorded session, thank you so much all for joining us today. So by that. Thank you. Good thank seeing you. Bye-bye.